My name is Samad Sepaskoza. I'm teaching industrial and infrastructure construction. Thank you for the opportunity to visit your construction site. Can you please introduce yourself? Yep, thanks for, thanks for coming, Samin. Um, my name's Ian Thompson. I'm the site manager for the right. um, science and engineering nice uh, building you. out here. So, yep. So, yeah, the aim of this construction site visit is to get an insight into your key activities here. Can you uh, describe the key activities and features? Yep, so currently um, at the moment we're undertaking the bulk excavation, so um, we're, we're moving a, approximately 2,000 tonne of sand per day. Um, so this is, this is the precursor to start the, the construction, so starting right. at the foundations right. yeah. first. Um, the, the building is a science and engineering building, so it'll be a, a, a research uh, teaching facility. Okay. Um, which, which will accompany the material science and engineering building. Right. Um, it's approximately 25,000 square metres of building area. Right. Um, uh, predominantly um, all concrete construction. Um, and, it, and it will finish looking exactly right. the same as the, the material science and engineering building. Okay. And uh, how about the excavation process? Can you just uh, briefly describe about the excavators uh, yep. arrangements here? So, so currently, um, as it is now undertaking the bulk excavation, there's, there's four excavators. Um, so each doing their own uh, little element. So you've got a smaller uh, right. 25 ton excavator, right. which is down in the bottom of the hull. Right. Um, that's doing the final sort of trimming. Okay. Um, and the, the minor detail around all the shoring piles. Right. Um, you've got two larger machines, so they're, they're 30, 32 ton, which is the orange machine, and they're 36 ton, which is loading the, the trucks as, as we're, right. we're speaking now. Um, right. Basically, those two are working as a team. Um, the, the orange excavators loading material up in a, in a, a radius for the, for the larger machine to, to load the trucks. Right. Um, this machine that's in front of us is a 21 ton um, excavator. It's a zero swing, so it's slightly smaller um, radius. So right, you see the right, counterweights yeah, on the other yeah, one swing yeah. over the track. Okay. Where this one can work in a, in a, in a tighter confined space. He's currently moving um, a piling material, piling platform material right. um, down into the hole. And, and it's a darker material, which you can see the material over there. Right. Um, and he'll put it, place it over there until they've reached the final level. Um, and they'll roll that out in a 600 mil layer, right. so approximately half a meter layer, right. um, and, and compact it with the, the roller that's over here, parked up at the moment, right. um, and that creates a, a wearing slab for, right. the, so, for the larger piling rig to roll around okay. on and, and work off. Right, um, okay. So, so uh, how about the transportation? Have you got any so, problem with transportation so, in the busy area? Here? Yeah, so cu currently we're running 24 trucks. We're loading out 2,000 ton a day. Right. Um, it, 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 logistically, to bring the trucks in and out is quite hard. Right. Um, obviously, within the university campus, it's, it's quite a tight road network. Um, during the planning stages, we were lucky enough to have um, negotiate both roads. Right. So those through roads that are within our site are enabling us to load out a lot faster within right. Right. the site, but then the, the vehicles are still having to right. travel through the UNOSW right. uh, yeah. road network. Um, obviously the trucks need to move quite slow within the campus. Right. Um, with the amount of students and, and, and pedestrian foot traffic within. Um, so we've actually lowered their speed limit to five kilometres an hour on right. campus, um, and they sign toolbox talks every day just to reiterate right, right. Their, their, yeah. their environment that they're working in. Um, external to that is um, there's a significant infrastructure upgrade state government with with the um, light rail. Right. Um, yeah. So getting in and out of campus is quite hard with the heavier vehicles. Right, I see. Um, and at the moment we're 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 dumping all this material at a at a site in Norellum. Okay. So the turnaround time is about approximately two and a half hours. So okay. with those uh, 24 trucks, we're approximately doing three to four loads per day. Right. Um, and and we're hitting our target of 2,000 okay. uh, tons per yeah. day. All right. So I can see different colors of soil here. So 
Can you uh, discuss about that? Yep. So current, currently the lighter material, which, which is mixed with slight organic, um, you can see that on, on the, the piled edge. Right. Um, that all mixed together is creating this sort of lighter colour sand. Right. Um, the darker material that you see in that far corner and, and the material that this machine is, is currently digging at the moment right. um, is an imported crust sandstone. Okay. Um, the reason why they brought that in is purely because the sand is of low density compaction. Right. Um, and, and this material here will be rolled out in, in layers, like okay. I mentioned before, for the piling platform. Okay. Um, and that gives us a wearing slab because the loads imposed on that machine okay. are significant in comparison right. to right. Um, right. a loosely um, compacted virgin right. sand yeah. ground. Okay. And then I can see half of your site is active. How about the other so uh, okay. half? So we've, we've split the site into two um, for two, two main reasons. Um, in programming, the right. tower section yeah. sits in this area that we've broken up. Yes. So that's part of our critical path. So we're having right. to start that okay. early. So we're, we're hitting the final end date. We have right. to start that at a specific time okay. um, to do that. The second, the second reason is um, approximately exactly where this machine's sitting at the moment um, is where our tower crane is situated. Mm, so okay. then the tower crane will go through the basement and, and attach to the outside mm. wall freestand on right. the outside of the building. In order to put that in, you imagine there's significant components to that and they're quite heavy. We need to have a mobile crane that will install that. Right. So it needs to be in a close, close radius to the crane. So we're not, the, the, the smaller the mobile, right. um, the yeah. smaller the lift, yes. the larger the, yeah. the lift, the heavier and furthest yes. yeah. um, distance, you need a large, large crane. So the mobile crane will actually sit up in here. So it's a staging platform okay. um, and we'll build each uh, tower crane component from this platform with the mobile crane. Right. Once that's installed, mm. um, this area here will be open for, for bulk excavation because okay. then now we're able to, although the crane's landlocked, it's able to pick up material from the surrounding road right. network. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I can see uh, reinforcement materials here as well. So can you tell us uh, about the process uh, yep. of reinforcement process. So, so currently, as you see here, um, there's a gray capping beam, which yep. looks like a strip footing on top right. of the pile. Yes. Um, so the, um, the, the, the piling rig will sink the piles and that creates the shoring. Right. The cages that you see here are encapsulated within the concrete strip footing on top, yeah. um, which is a 750 by 750 um, capping beam. Okay. Um, and these cages, uh, slightly smaller, they're 600 by 600, enabling um, reinforcement mm. coverage of concrete right, to right. stop concrete cancer. Yeah. Do you have different types of cages here in this site? So, or, or so all these, these of... cages are predominantly right. will be for the whole um, perimeter. Yeah. Um, however, these heavier gauge bars that you see in there, those, those L bars, right. There's certain elements to this capping beam where there'll be cantilevered slabs. Right. So okay. at the moment you see over here, um, the, the slab just sits on top of them and they'll have columns underneath it right. in certain right. areas. Those, those heavier bars will be cogged within the, um, the footing beam or the, the capping beam and that'll okay. enable the, the bending moments right. of the slab yeah. cantilevered okay. off that. Right. The, the ends yeah. of those slabs won't have okay. a column. So the, the forces on that is, is quite So you quite have great. any specific cage for the pile itself? Uh, we do, there's none here on site at, at this present moment, but basically it will be something similar to this, but it's a spiral cage that okay. they're welded. Um, and because of the ground conditions here, it's sand. Um, so the piling rig itself is, it's, it's a CFA rig. Right. Um, so it's a central flight auger uh, rig. Basically, if you have a look at that, you can see the black hoses right. that go through it and then yeah. there's a concrete hopper crawler. Okay. So the process with that is a, um, uh, a concrete truck will back up to this hopper okay. um, and, and that uh, auger will go into the ground and the, uh, the piling rig will extract that at, at the same time pumping concrete right. um, to stop the ground um, subsiding right. as it's coming right. out. That's yeah. scraped level and then the cages the reason why they welded is the machine, right, the excavator right. will pick it up okay. and he slides it under okay. great force down back yeah. into the concrete board okay. um, hole. All right, can you please 
uh, tell us about different factors uh, that might influence uh, the pro productivity of your excavation or yep. process? So, or... so there's a number of factors. Yeah. Obviously, um, your supply chain, um, whether the guys are here on the day, you've got separate RDO um, days where, where contractors um, have time off. Um, sometimes people say they're right. going to show yeah, up and they okay. don't show yeah. up. Um, the, the other factors would be the external um, environment. Okay. So the construction of the light rail, yes. um, this rig actually got delayed yes. um, to bring in for three or four days because mm. they shut down Anzac Parade and we couldn't get the turning circle in from the, yeah. the heavy float yeah. to get this particular machine in. Um, and then the, the obvious one is weather. Weather, yeah. Weather is yeah. weather's the, yeah. the greatest one. So in the hardball tender mm. type scenarios, right. um, we always have a contract Okay. program that's put in place that that mm. includes weather okay all right so um, we can't claim weather mm. um, so that's just something we have to program around okay. um, and we do have a builders contingency within that yeah um, but it, it's in, insignificant what we had with the rain at the start of the year okay. um, there were six seven weeks of yes. non-stop rain yeah. so you imagine that what that would have caused. Luckily, here we hadn't started, right, uh, but right, other sites yeah. that I know okay. of, um, uh, uh, mm. insignificant delay because of that. Mm, and, okay. and there's different program workshops and, and right. reprogramming and, and breaking down each element as, as much as they possibly can to try and fast track the next okay. stages of their construction to, to, to make up for that, that uh, rain delay. Mm, okay. As an overall question, uh, what is the sequence of the, the construction process uh, currently? So, so typically you, you'd obviously, um, you can see us here undertaking the bulk excavation. So you're starting from the foundations first, um, but you've also got to keep in mind all your, your material handling equipment as well. Okay. So like I explained before, we've cut the site into half. Yes. And, and that, that's predominantly a for program yeah. but but the predominant fixture for that is because we're installing our tower crane from okay, this staging yes, platform right, so yeah. it, it's not a matter of just starting and then forgetting mm. about the rest you right. have to think about how the methodology yes, of yeah. the construction and how you're going to construct the building right. with specific plant mm. and equipment okay so so the tower crane is obviously one of the most integral parts of your material handling for mm. for a large-scale um, construction project and hence the reason why we've stopped certain elements in order to install it um, and and once that's done then we're, we're set up okay and how to mitigate uh, when the sequence is affected so um, there's obviously a lot of planning that goes in there's lots of contingency plans that, right. that, that get put out there's no one steadfast okay. way of doing something mm. um, each week I hold a, a team meeting with my my guys and we go okay. through the program um, and then subsequently from that, we have a subcontractor meeting. So we push it right. out to a, our okay. supply chain. Yeah. Um, and, and we agree on specific mm. dates. Um, we talk about the better ways of doing mm. things. We're, we're not mandating you have to do it okay. a, a particular way. Um, we, we open it up to our, our subcontractor base to, okay. to work out the most cost effective right. and program effective yeah. way to, okay. to undertake something. So we, you might not have to follow a specific sequence okay um, I guess you could say there's no one particular yeah, way to skin a cat right, right? Yeah. Um, so you can follow a different sequence but you end up at the same yes um, result sometimes yeah. sometimes right. faster each each specific um, thing is slightly different to another right. uh, thing yeah okay uh, that's a good point that you have different meetings with your colleagues and sub different subcontractors uh, can you tell us about your team members and also different uh, uh, project stakeholders working with you? Okay, so in, in, in our project team, um, the, the, the scale of this project, the, the contract value is 170 odd million dollars, right? Right. So our project team, it's a, a design and construct um, contract. Yeah. So within my, my team, I have a project manager um, who's responsible for the overall project yes. I'm, I'm responsible for the site and right. and programming and 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 budgeting to that a certain degree um, we have a contract manager who looks at our procurement supply chain and 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 letting program uh, pro uh, subcontractors 
um, and then we have design managers who, who, who look at the overall design and then he's got engineers that are running right, off him refining right. the design. Okay. I, we have consultants that do that too, but we manage okay. the, the design and the construction of, of the building. So right. our, our site team base would probably have about 30, 30 people, direct okay. staff in, in, in our team. Um, and then external to that, um, we're, we're looking at a peak labour force of pro approximately 400 people right, um, okay. on the project. Mm. And of those 400 people, they have their own teams. Okay, so right. say, for example, Ford Civil have yes. undertaken the, um, the excavation and foundations uh, okay. uh, component of the build. And approximately now they have about 36 people um, from CWs, so construction yes, workers, yeah including machine operators, yes. their site management yeah. team with their engineers, okay. their surveyors, um, uh, accounting off-site, right, but right. At, at present on-site, right. there's, there's approximately 36, 36 of them. So, uh, so many different subcontractors involved in this process. How many subcontractors exactly do you have for key activities? Well, predominantly you'll have um, some key subcontractors, so we would have our earthworks contractor, we'd have a formwork contractor who, who does all the false work for the concrete. You'd right. have a steel fixing contractor. Yeah. You'd have a hydraulics contractor, an electrical mm. contractor, a um, facade contractor. Um, and each of those elements right. would have little subcontractors underneath them that they would be in charge yes. of okay. in underneath their package. So say, for example, um, the, the, the civil works contractor, Ford Civil, right. underneath them they have, and you can see them over there, they've got a labour force. Right. That, that inside of them will have a steel fixing crew right, and then the form right. working crew. Okay. Um, and then they have their own surveyors, their own piling um, subcontractor as well, all encapsulated within their mm. scope okay. of work. All right. Uh, what is your plan for next week? So next week, uh, predominantly at the moment now, we're, we're, we're cutting the basement to a level. Um, and then we'll be rolling out this piling platform in layers okay. and compacting it. Um, next week we're planning to have the, the rig remobilised right. and go back down into the hole. Okay. Um, and, and from there he'll start sinking his foundation piles from um, the crane foundation piles uh, to the main building uh, foundation piles. Excellent. Thank you very much for valuable information. No problem. Thank you Thank very you. much for coming.